the greatest college coach of all time. That's where I'll start. So you can debate that, and there are other people who would be in the conversation. But if I have one game to win, and I want a team to be motivated and prepared and excited and to understand the moment, uh, I would take Roy Simmons Jr. I will put him in the locker room with any team in any era at any time. And I know for certain that that team's going to come out flying. There was never a better person in the locker room to get a team prepared and excited to play. Uh, the stories we heard, whether it was the bugs and the animals in a game of football or the construction of the Sistine Chapel or whether you were a big potato or a small potato, the list goes on. And, and I don't recall all of them, but there are certain ones that absolutely you know, stay with you forever. And that was one of the great, I would say, talents or skills that, that Coach had. Uh, but it was so much deeper than that for me personally. It was about relationships and the things that I didn't understand at the time that I appreciate more than ever now, um, particularly the relationships and the way he understood everybody's story and where everyone was coming from and somehow had a way of getting a grip on what someone was going through at a particular time. So I don't know how he did it. I don't know who his sources were and how he was able to, you know, gather that information. But there wasn't anything going on that he wasn't aware of. And he wasn't intrusive and he, he didn't, you know, sit down and, you know, look for information or anything like that. He just, he had a way. Uh, and, and it really was, it was because of genuine concern and care um, for each of us. And he was great to me and continues to this day to be, um, you know, a valued relationship and a dear friend. So, you know, there, there are areas of that that have nothing to do with lacrosse. And that's really the way I would put it. You know, we won a lot of games and we were, one of the greatest teams of all time. But what I think about when I consider my relationship and my time with Simi is, is not about playing the game. It's about preparing for the game of life. And it goes back to before I, I was committed to Syracuse. It was, you know, I was a senior in high school and my father passed away. And um, because of my confusion and my indecision, a lot of my opportunities had had gone by the wayside and other people had filled spots that I may have been able to take at particular schools. And he was the only one who kept an open door for me. And I got a letter from him. Um, I want to say it was in February of my senior year. So think about that in today's, you know, landscape of recruiting. I got a, a letter from a coach that I, when I was in probably late February, um, February 27th to be exact, of my senior year of high school and explaining that he understood what I went through and that uh, he, he appreciated what I was going through. And there was an open door for me there, but more than just telling me he wanted me to come to Syracuse, he wanted me to be okay. And he, he knew that I needed to go to college, something that I may have um, let go had it not been for him reaching out for me. So I, to this day, I have this framed picture of the two of us and the letter that he wrote me on February 27th of 1987, where he offered me the opportunity to go to Syracuse and he stuck with me. And in the end, I ended up going there, obviously. And I don't know if it's fate. I don't know if it's just good fortune, but it was one of the single greatest decisions of my life. And I don't know where my life goes without my relationship with, with coach and without him giving me the opportunity. I certainly don't achieve the things I did on the field because I don't know that anyone would have given me the freedom to fail the way he did. And someone who was understanding that my style was a little risky uh, and he was tolerant of that. And he was, um, I would say, patient with me uh, and encouraged others to be patient with me as well. 
because he saw something that in me that maybe could be good and he brought the best out of me. He didn't get anything. He didn't take anything from me, uh, but he made me understand and he brought the best out of me. And, and I really appreciate that. And it's helped me become better in every other area of my life. Uh, it's, it helped me become a, you know, a better father, a better husband, uh, certainly a better coach. But it, it's there's things that you think back on as a person, not as a player, but as a person. And there are people in your life and you, you kind of pick them out and say, what would they do? What would they think? And he is one of those people that I always go back to. And it's going to sound strange or maybe corny, but to this day, I want to make him proud and I don't want to disappoint him, much like I feel about members of my family. Uh, so it's a special relationship. Uh, and he's been there for me like that since before February 27th of 1987. And when you think about relationships in your life, how many last that long? And how many remain that important for that long? So it's not something that we should take for granted. It's certainly not something that I take for granted, but it is, you know, of primary importance. It is one of the greatest things in my life, um, my experience and what he did for me. And not just me, but he knew everybody's story. He knew what made everybody go. He knew what troubled everyone, and he figured out a way to um, be there for everyone. And it was whether you were the top guy on the team or you were the last guy on the depth chart. It didn't matter. And that was one of the really special things. So clearly the greatest coach, in my opinion, of all time. But that is such a small part of who he is and who he was. Um, how many schools in the late 80s to early 90s, went to Broadway shows on the road, went to museums, went to aquariums, um, and experienced things that were much greater than lacrosse because there's a lot more to life than what goes on between the lines. And he appreciated that and he understood that and he wanted us to feel that way. And we did not get it at the time. We did not want to go to a Broadway show. We did not want to go to a museum. But every time we walked out, we were glad we did. And it was, those were special experiences. I'm going to give you a story about uh, people and how the world comes around in, in a circle. So one of my dear friends is, is a guy named John DiTomaso, who was one of the greatest players of all time, a great coach as well, a great leader, an educator, uh, just a fine person. And another person I look at. In, in a similar way to, to the way I feel about Simi. He was obviously a nemesis of Syracuse and he was generally charged with covering Tim Nelson, who was another all time great. And they would go back and forth and John and, and Tim would be John defending Tim and Tim being very important for the Syracuse offense and John being the cornerstone of the Hopkins defense. And they would go back and forth all the time. And it was a great matchup. And I wasn't paying attention at the time, but I learned about it later on. And I would see video of it in film. And it was just remarkable the way those two competed. And John tells a story of, and I don't recall exactly where it was, whether it was an All-American banquet or something that was going on, where John ran into coach and he did not know him. He knew he was the coach at Syracuse. He knew he was the enemy. He understood that. You know, seems like a nice enough guy, but he's not my guy. And probably the first time they ever met, Simi gave him a framed picture of John covering Tim Nelson. And it's, it's a great picture to this day. I think it's actually on the mural uh, in the field house, you know, in Manly, uh, where John is doing a really good job and Tim's kind of posting him up, but John has him uh, in really good position. And it's a great picture for both of them, but coach thought enough to have the picture framed and give it to the enemy because he just thought it was something that he should have. Uh, I don't know a lot of guys who do things like that. I think it's a special gesture. 
I think it says a lot about um, how you can have an appreciation for an opponent. While you may not like them at the time, you can have an appreciation for what they do and you want to extend yourself and let them know that. Uh, that's one of the one of the stories that John told me. Uh, it, it's it's really something that has always stayed with me. For me, it is the way he treated me in some of the toughest times of my life. It is the way he treated my family through that same time. Um, the way he was kind to my mother is something I'll never forget. Um, but he made my experience. Um, much more than lacrosse. He made it something that uh, my family could rally around and feel good about and allow the next chapter of our lives to get going. Uh, and it was very important for us. So I am forever indebted to him as a coach, as a mentor, as a friend. Um, and I cannot say enough about what he's done for me and so many. But ultimately, the most important thing is to tell him and to make sure he always knows that I love him. So, head hard hustle every day. Thank you so much. And I hope you're well.